permit did not consider strategically the role of religious communities in this whole process. We will come back to that. We will come back to the issue of the role of the religious leaders, particularly the issue of substituting Muslim leaders in the United States for the religious leaders in Palestine and thinking this is going to work. We will continue this discussion with our colleagues when we get back after a short break. Thank you. Welcome back to Global Forum. We are discussing with our panelists the issue of interfaith, interreligious dialogue and communication. And now that we have two panelists, we just have one more per, uh, friend of ours, Dr. Ahmed Al-Akhras, who joined us, who is the National Vice Chair of CARE. He's also a professional engineer, also host of a television program, a man with many hats, and also has been engaged with interfaith dialogue for the last 15 years, particularly in uh, the state of Ohio. Welcome to you. Thank you. And you have been doing this for, I think, another 15, 20 years, so we have 40 years of experience sitting here. What can young Muslims learn from both of you in terms of what your enterprise has been? First of all, tell me briefly why each of you chose this path, what were the reasons you went into this, and what are your <coughs> summary observations of this process? Well, uh, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Uh, interfaith dialogue is not about conversion, first of all. It is about understanding. And as, as you all know, uh, since September 11th, we realized that Islam is the most misunderstood religion, not only in the United States, rather around the world. So we realized that we, as Muslims, have not done a good job in explaining our Islam, in reaching out to people out there, and educating them about Islam. Hence, we are f being faced with, with tremendous misunderstandings, and when uh, CARE conducted a survey or a poll a couple of years ago, and when people were asked about their uh, uh, perception about Islam and Muslims in the United States, we only found, unfortunately at the time, only 2% had positive views of Islam and Muslims, 32% negative views of Islam and Muslims, and the balance, about 66%, were neutral. 18 months later, we did the same survey, and we found 6% uh, positive views, three times as much, and 26% negative views. And uh, uh, how, uh, although Islam has been in this country for hundreds of years, why are we at this low level of understanding? And when people were asked about the first thing that comes to mind when they hear about Islam and Muslims, some of the comments were Muslims hate life, Muslims do not appreciate their children, Muslims uh, disrespect women, and that kind of thing. Yet all this is contrary to, to what reality is. So I guess we take the blame as Muslims that we have not done a good job for the past many, many years in educating people about who we are. So from that angle, I guess this is a, a very long lead to, to answering the question. I think we owe it to ourselves, at least from self-preservation, to, to, to engage ourselves in the dialogue, in the interfaith dialogue, so at least people will understand who we are. Obviously. Oh, good. Well, I see the interfaith actually dialogue or interfaith activities uh, right now within the Muslim community is a natural development and growth for the Muslim community. Uh, in the past, the Muslim community, of course, engaged in building mosques or Islamic schools uh, to keep the identity and things like that. But now the community realized that uh, building bridges and creating alliances within their neighbors is something that's very important. And that's actually what brought ISNA to uh, take a decision, even opening an office for interfaith and community alliances in Washington, D.C., to focus on interfaith relations and interfaith projects. And these projects, they might be, they are um, national in their nature, but they are for local implementation. So that's what we are trying to, uh, uh, to do. But in terms of doing this interfaith outreach, as uh, Dr. Akras was saying, one has been trying to remove the misunderstanding about Islam 
To what extent Muslim community has learned about the other faiths, Christians or Hindus or Buddhists or Sikhs? Because it, it seems by definition it has to be a two-way street. To what extent we are traveling on the other side of the street? Yeah, that's actually true. Um, we, I can give you just one example. Our relationship with the National Council of Churches. It is a very strong relationship, and I can maybe mention other um, you know, examples. You know, um, but we have a joint project with the National Council of Churches called God is One. So this is a two-way street. The purpose of this project is actually to um, educate the pastors and the priests about Islam. And, and the priests, they can do a study circle within their churches and within their localities, and then invite imams to join them um, uh, just to talk about you know, mutual understandings. Then they can go to the mosque and also talk about uh, issues uh, has to do with the Christianity and so that the Muslim community also has to understand the, Christ the, the Christianity also. But it seems to me, I'll concede you one second, it seems to me just at a very superficial level that people who come from churches and other religious institutions, they have far better knowledge of Islam, at least you know, in terms of the basics, vocabulary, sensitivities, sensibilities, than Muslim interlocutors going into the same dialogues about Catholicism or about Hinduism or about you know any other Sikhism or Buddhism and so on and so forth. Why is that? Well, it is the answer is pretty simple. Is that the Muslim community, as I mentioned earlier, is engaged in developing the community, building their worship worship places, um, and Islamic school to keep their kids' identity. So they did not you know get a chance to. To, to deal with their neighbors or to you know to study these kind of things but now it is a time and we are doing that right now and when times comes I'm pretty sure they will have a reasonable understanding for the Catholicism and other well, Mr. Sinos, isn't it true, again, is it true that many Muslims who came from Middle East or South Asia went to Catholic schools missionary schools elites by and large in the Muslim world were trained by Catholic and missionary schools I myself went to formal Christian college before I went to St. Mary's and then St. Joseph and so on and so forth. So why is it that decades of education in Christian institutions did not prepare Muslims to be knowledgeable about the faiths that they are dialoguing about? Is it something that needs to be critically examined as a matter of attitude where we by and large go unprepared to these discussions and we, assume, we turn always these two-way streets into one-way street and not do our homework? Well, I mean, doing our homework is something that is very essential and we should do that. But even people like you and other people who went to these uh, Christian schools, they actually engage in the community affairs. Um, leader like you and others, they engage in the community affairs that has to do with, uh, they don't see learning the Catholicism or Christianity as a priority, but they see other things as a priority. Uh, building the Islamic center or building the Islamic school or uh, solving issues for new immigrants uh, because our community is not established yet. So those actual issues um, actually took most of the time for leaders like yourself and not focusing and educating our community about how imp important it is to know uh, well the, religious, the religion of your neighbor. So well, I'll, I'll answer this on, on two uh, fronts. One is, uh, we believe in all the prophets before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We believe in Isa and Musa and uh, Jacob, uh, Yaqub and, and, and Adam and Noah and all, 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 these, all these prophets. So, so from, from that angle, we, I, I think Muslims did not feel that they need to learn more about these other religions because we already believe in all these religions.